I think I think it's just going. <laughs> okay. Already somebody's logged in. See, number two. <laughs> so are we going to be to Kelly? It's fine. Okay. At least this way we don't have to worry about it, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. You'll do the you'll do the attorney thing. Yeah, yes, okay. Bless you. Thank you. Remind me of your name. Titi Lion. Titi Lion. Cici. T T I T I. T T I C I. T I T I N E Y Z. Titi Lion. Cici Lion. Yes. Cici Lion. Okay. I'll work on it. Cici Lion. Thank you, Bishop. That's good. Thank you. You're welcome.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him to all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, Choose this day whom you, you, will, you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the, from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did these great signs at our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people, the Amorites who lived on the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is, he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm, and consume you after having done the good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are you after having done your good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves, that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our Lord we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them and Shechem. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Hear my teaching, O oh my people. 
As you know, we dealt with one another, like a father with his children, urging and encouraging him, completing him to lead a life worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. We also give constant thanks to God for this, that when you receive the word of God, that you buy it for us, that you accepted it, not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also a word for new believers, the word of the Lord. Il Santo Vangelo di nostro Signore Gesù Cristo secondo Matteo. Il regno dei cieli è simile a dieci vergini che, prese le loro lastre, uscirono in comune lo sposo. Cinque di esse erano stolte e cinque saggi. Le stolte presero le lastre, ma non presero con sé l'olio. Le saggi invece, insieme alle lastre, presero anche del loro in piccoli pasti. Poiché lo sposo tardava, si assopirono tutte e dormirono. A mezzanotte si levò un grido: Ecco lo sposo, andate in conto. Allora tutte quelle vergini si destarono e prepararono le loro lampade. E le stolte dissero le sagge: Fateci del vostro olio, perché le nostre lampade si spingono. Ma le sagge risposero: No, non che abbia a mancare per noi e per voi. Andate piuttosto dai venditori, compratevene. Ora, mentre quelle andavano per comprare l'olio, arrivò lo sposo e le vergini che erano pronte entrarono con quelle morse della porta di Dio. Più tardi arrivarono anche le altre vergini e cominciarono a dire Signore, Signore, amici, ma egli rispose In verità vi dico, non vi conosco, vegliatevi, perché non sapete del giorno che lo fate. Vangelo del Signore. Foolish took their lives, 
they took no oil with them. But the wives took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wives, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wives replied, No, it will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. Those who were called who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. The words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I'd like to begin, if I may, with a word of thanks to Liz Charles. We're laboring all the way through that with less than Joshua, which now that you've heard it, I'm going to ignore completely. I'm sorry, Liz, but I have other things to say this morning, and they focus on that letter that you heard from St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Think about this line especially, the last sentence. Therefore, encourage one another with these if there is one thing God knows about Christians, and I suspect there is a lot more than one thing God knows about us, it is that Christians are impatient people. Actually, it's probably more accurate to say that God knows this about all of us, about all humanity. And God knows as well that Christians, no less than anyone else, are impatient people. St. Paul knew this. We heard this morning from what we think is the earliest Christian writing we have. The very first Christian text in the whole Bible, a text even older than all the Gospel accounts. The first letter Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. And what we heard from that letter is one of the major reasons Paul wrote to them. It was to deal with their impatience. Here's the problem. The church in Thessalonica took shape when Paul visited the city. He did what he always did. He went to preach in the synagogue. He went there for three Saturdays running. Some people there listened to him. Most of them did not. But a lot more people in the town, people who were not Jewish, they listened to him too. And together, these two groups formed what became one of the earliest Christian churches. One of the reasons they found Paul's message so hopeful was that they really believed they were living at the end of time. The world around them seemed so unsteady, so topsy-turvy, so ready to come apart in chaos, they were afraid. And in that moment, Paul brought this message. The Messiah that had been promised to the children of Abraham, the very presence of God in the midst of all of us, that had actually happened. The promise had been fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Almost no one saw it at first. Jesus was a guy from the wrong town, in the wrong line of work, who hung out with the wrong kind of people. But something about this man had shaken people out of their complacency. He taught 
the truth. He healed people. He showed mercy to the people who had been thrown out. And he showed defiance to the people in power. And when they tried to kill him, somehow he did not stay dead. All of that together filled these people in Thessalonica with expectation. At any moment they expected Jesus to return and sweep away the powers of this world. They saw all that had happened, all that Paul had told them about, and what they heard was, we, all of us, very soon, will be transported through the end of time and into the embrace of God. Any moment. And that was the problem. Because they thought all of the worst parts of human life, all of the suffering, all of the losing people you love to death, all of the sorrow, they thought all of that was going to go away. And they wouldn't have to live through any of that anymore. And it hadn't happened yet. They still suffered. They still watched as people they loved died. It seemed as though nothing had changed and they were confused. That is the church Paul is writing to. That is the message we heard him speak to them today and to us 2,000 years later. He tells that church two things. He tells them how it will happen, not when, but how. But what is a lot more important is he tells them how to live like Christians. The how is this pretty dramatic vision of what the end times will look like. Those who have died in faith will be raised, and then we will be caught up in the air with them and meet God somewhere between earth and heaven. It's a kind of special effects vision of what heaven will be like. No one's really sure where Paul got this idea from. But it is the image he plants in the minds of those faithful people gives them comfort. Sort of like knowing a little bit about how the airplane flies makes it easier to go on your first flight. But then Paul gives these people the most important advice ever given to Christian churches. Encourage one another. Encourage one another with these words. Help each other. Build up each other. Be encouraged. These people around you, they are just as worried as you are. They are carrying a burden just as heavy as yours, or me, have you. They have just as many doubts as you do, maybe more. It doesn't really help. It doesn't help them to spend our energy finding reasons to disagree with them or to criticize their ideas of what the church is for, or to judge whether they live a life as virtuous as it should be, or to expect them to follow in our doubts. None of that helps the church. And the church is where we get ready. The church is what prepares us for that moment that we can't imagine. When Jesus talks about what the kingdom of heaven is like, we are always being invited to see how much our world is not like what he describes. But my sisters and brothers, I will confess to you that the whole thing about bridesmaids and the bridegroom and the lamps and the oil, all of that has always been really hard for me to grasp. Believe me when I tell you that Judy's bridesmaids did not wait overnight for me with a bunch of lamps at church. They waited in an air-conditioned room in the middle of August, and they didn't care if I showed up or not. So maybe Jesus is trying to teach us in this image something like what Paul was trying to teach those Thessalonians. Maybe the important thing for us to know about the kingdom of heaven is that it is about people who are looking forward to what is coming 
over the horizon. Being people of the kingdom means knowing that God is out there in the future, coming toward us. Being kingdom people means preparing now as best as we can to get ready for what is coming. And being kingdom people means knowing that the best way we can possibly prepare, the best way for us to wait for whatever God has in store for us, is to encourage each other, to build up each other. We are people waiting for something. That is our whole life right now. We are waiting for Father Richard. Until late last night, I was waiting to know what the heck was going to happen in my country. We are all waiting for an end to this terrible, burdensome disease and all the isolation and the distance that it has forced us to live with. We have no choice but to wait. The choice we get to make is how we wait. Kingdom people wait by getting ready. And they get ready by encouraging each other. Here's the most important thing that any one of us can do to encourage someone else in this place. It's just these three words. Yes, I will. Yes, I will help. Yes, I will listen. Yes, I will show up. Yes, I'll try something new or imagine a new possibility. Yes, I will stay awake with you to see what God has in store for us. Yes, I will. So, encourage one another with these words as St. Paul taught us. Stay awake. Let's keep together, even if it's dark. Let's keep together, even if we have to do it by Zoom. Let's keep together, looking out toward the horizon. Because that is where God's dawn will break on us. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, <laughs> guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and serve the common good. We pray for good governance and a smooth transition in America. Lord, in your mercy, <laughs> Give us all the remembrance of the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We thank you for the safe return of the household of Maria and Nebula among us as well. For Caroline and, and for a, a gift you for good time. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope for their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for Shannon, Sylvia, Loveline, Testimony and Praise, Bright, Solomon, Maria, Linda, Cynthia and their children, Yami and her family, Jeff and his family, Prospect, Chilogen, Juliet, Stella, Jessica, Gilbert, Leonardo, Julie, Lydia, Alberto, Margarita, Peggy, Sarah, and family. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Remembering especially Beth, Mr. and Mrs. Edward, Udoga, Uke, Roderick, Ruben, Stephen, Patrick Anne, Comfort, Joseph, Victor, Felix, Maria, Marinus, Eugene, John, Pascal, and Lord. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our prayers. Faithful and loving God, we trace our journeys and our resting and our intention on the day. The saints and dangers bless us with joy and beauty and fun. Find us together in fellowship and love. Let us be a friend of the world spirit and a companion for the world. Give your allegiance to the Father of Jesus. He may be a pastor of the territory of the He grip us for our ministries and find our life in our power. Grant us we may walk with you in the way of love and reflect our truths and light on us. We pray in the power of our Holy Spirit and the hope of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God.
St. James, if you are here for the first time, for the first time in a long time, we are delighted to see you and to welcome you here to this remarkable parish in Florence. I'm not the person you're waiting for. I'm just the bishop, and I'm here until the person you're waiting for is here. Um, I'll be leaving on Monday for a very quick trip back to the U.S. that I had planned a year ago. Walter Bear, the Archdeacon, Convocation to be here in my place for the next two weeks. But we are yours. If there are any needs that you have, pastorally, we're here to be the priest of the parish until Father, no, Father Richard is here. So, by all means, call on us. The way to find us is through the office. Patricia pretty much always knows where I am. So, good to be here. For some of us, today is Remembrance Sunday. For Americans, that happens usually in May. For those of us who come from a British history, today is a day of particular importance as we remember those who have given their lives for the countries that we love. So we hold those especially in our prayers today as we remember those who have served at great peril and given their todays that we might have our tomorrow. I want to remind you that we are in the midst of stewardship season, and I see the hopeful eyes of Lisa Colella in the very back pew raising her hand, the person who spoke to us last week about the, the importance of stewardship in a Christian community. What she said is true. It's no less true today. We're in this season of weeks in which we ask you to reflect on all you have been given by God. And then to give back some of that to the life of the church so that God's message can be shared with others. Now I think if you want a pledge card, it's downstairs. Is that, is that what I understand? Okay. I will bet you one will be found for you if you ask me something. Am I right? Okay. Yes, I recently heard a sermon in which the best words to say were, yes, I will, right? Yes, I will sign up. Yes, I will volunteer. So, see, she's preaching my sermon. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Is there anything else that needs to be said to the faith? No? Then walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice.
we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with James and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and in Christ and with Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We have not the truth, but deliver us for thine is the kingdom of God. Power from the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Amen. Friends in Christ, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take in remembrance of Christ that I for you, and beat on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus. And you have put us the Spirit in the sacrament of the body. Send us now to the world of peace. And now God grant to the living grace, to the dead breath, to the city and the nation, the church and all the world, peace and comfort. And to us, God's children, may God's mercy come and overshadow us. And the blessing, the mercy, and the grace of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those who love and pray in heaven and on earth. This day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia.